بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه All praises belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and peace and salutations upon the final messenger Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship besides one Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger My dearest brothers and sisters in Islam Salamu Allahi alaykum wa rahmatuhu wa barakatuh May the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon you all Welcome to our series Etiquettes 101 In our last uh, episode we introduced the topic and we began discussing the importance of seeking knowledge and um, then we promised to dive into the etiquettes of seeking knowledge and the first etiquette we discussed uh, was um, the etiquette of having noble character when seeking knowledge it's important to have character before seeking knowledge and um, Imam Malik rahimahullah, his mother when she took him and placed him with his teacher she told his teacher that teach him manners before you teach him knowledge subhanallah and we know um, you know we all know Imam Malik and he's an Imam right but subhanallah, subhanallah look and focus on the advice of his mother may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with her right um, I think her statement uh, really ties up this first etiquette that one of the first etiquettes you need before you seek knowledge is to fix your character right make yourself a sublime human being learn what you need to learn right to enable yourself to behave as a better human being upon uh, the way of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when you have that then go and dig into the more intricate, more intimate knowledge of our Sharia. And in this way, you will do a greater justice to it because you will appreciate the weight of carrying this knowledge. And in our last episode, we spoke about, you know, you know, a person who might have knowledge of halal and haram, but he just doesn't know how to deal with people. You know, he's a means of disunity. He's a means of enmity spreading. You know, the, norm, the, you know, the, the, the general public will not want to uh, naturally, by default, it's human nature. That even if you know how knowledgeable this person is, you won't want to seek knowledge from this person. And uh, Allah Musta'an, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is enough for us. This is a, a sad situation, and we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to protect us from the situation. Amin. So etiquette number one: adorn yourself with beautiful character. You know, learn uh, what's required, and make sure you walk the talk. When I say walk the talk, I mean you need to make yourself a person whose knowledge exists in his or her. Uh, character and appearance and um, actions and so on and so forth and to just to remind you all of that wonderful ayah in the Quran in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَإِنَّكَ لَا عَلَىٰ خُلِقٍ عَظِيمٍ that you are indeed upon sublime character meaning you are immersed in sublime character everything about you is sublime subhanallah and indeed in the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a perfect example for us and Aisha radiallahu anha once she was asked about you know the character of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his behavior and she radiallahu anha may Allah be pleased with her said that his character was the Quran that what you read in the Quran you see it in motion with him he is a walking talking Quran sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that is the first etiquette the next etiquette my dearest brothers and sisters when you seek knowledge when you seek knowledge is to be sincere and this is a fundamental important um, uh, you know, etiquette to have because seeking knowledge, as we said earlier, when we seek Islamic knowledge, right, or detailed knowledge of Islam, um, or any knowledge of Islam, it is the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward us, right, and our Jannah is built as a result of our actions. When we seek knowledge, there's streams being dug for us in Jannah. When we seek knowledge, there's palaces being built for us in Jannah. When we seek knowledge, there's MashaAllah, forests being planted for us in Jannah. When we seek knowledge, there's treasures being buried for us in Jannah. Our Jannah is growing and moving and shaking and becoming even more developed and even more developed and even more developed. We have real estate appearing there. When we seek knowledge, it is the worship of Allah. 
And when you worship Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards you. And when he rewards you, your jannah gets bigger. Like Ibn al-Qayyim says, rahimahullah, that subhanallah and alhamdulillah and Allahu Akbar, this worship of Allah, this worship of Allah, these uh, words and these statements um, entail, entail the seeds of jannah, the seeds to our forests. And uh, a person keeps the angels busy building his or her jannah when he or she is engaged in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you stop remembering Allah, then the angels stop uh, in their activities building your jannah. So seeking knowledge is a jannah building exercise, which means it has to be only done for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. You cannot seek knowledge for the degree. You cannot seek knowledge for the certificate. You cannot seek knowledge so people can say you are a knowledgeable person. You cannot seek knowledge for name. You cannot seek knowledge for fame. You cannot seek knowledge because you know what, quite frankly, I have nothing better to do. No, this knowledge, the knowledge of halal and haram, the knowledge of Islam, it's, it's, it's a great responsibility. It's a great amana, and it comes with a great aura. It is the knowledge of success and failure. It is the knowledge of the hellfire and paradise, right? So uh, we must be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. It can't be to become rich. It has to be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And as with all types of worship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Bayyina, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ حُنَفَاء Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the fifth ayah or verse uh, in the 98th surah or surah al bayyina in the Quran that they were not commanded except that they should worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone sincerely. Sincerely. And then what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say after that? Allah says, Lahu deen. And this is all of religion. Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that this concept and aspect of being sincere and doing it for Allah, this is all of religion. This is the crux of la ilaha illallah, la ma'buda bihaqqin illallah, that there's no one worthy of worship besides one Allah. This is all of religion. It has to only be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know what, my dearest brothers and sisters, if you want to be rewarded and get the benefits of doing it, then it has to be for Allah. Because Allah doesn't judge us based on the show. He judges us based on the reality. What do I mean by this? Show, reality. Isn't the show the reality? No. No. There's a difference between the personality trait and the character trait. Right? And it's important that we say that because this is a course about character and etiquettes, right? A series about character and etiquettes. So there's a difference between these two traits. The personality trait is the show. It's what you do to create a particular perception about you, right? It's how people view you. And people can only view you based on the apparent, right? You know, you could be a poor person, but if you dress in, uh, you know, designer clothing, what's going to happen? People will say you must be rich. They judge based on the reality. They don't know whether you've borrowed that piece of clothing. They don't know your situation. And you could be a rich person dressed up as a poor person, right? And... People will judge you and say, he, he, you know, he's not a rich person because they only have the apparent to judge you by. And sadly, the world has entered this phase, especially after World War I, in my estimate, right? It became a world whereby the personality trait overpowered the character trait. It is all about the show, not about the reality. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, right? Relationships are created because of the show, not because of the reality. In fact, we have a profession known as the spin doctor's profession, right? That you're a doctor in spinning things, in spinning the way people perceive things, right? So you could have a particular person who does something in a certain way and it could be detrimental to him or her because of what they did. So they hire a spin doctor to spin that situation, meaning to spin the perceptions of people and how they perceive them as a result of that. And this is an actual profession, right? Yes, it's, hypo it's, it's hypocritical, and um, it's, it's, it's a case of hypocrisy, but this is the age that we live in. And that's why we need to be especially, especially, uh, you know, in touch with this etiquette. The etiquette of being sincere when seeking knowledge, because it shouldn't be a show, because Allah will judge us based on our reality. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? 
uh, or do. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us that inna allaha la yanzuru ila suwarikum wa la ila ajsadikum wa lakin yanzur ila qulubikum wa a'malikum. That Allah doesn't look at the show, doesn't look at what at, at the outside, doesn't look at your, your, you know, your appearance, right? Uh, and your bodies, but Allah looks at your heart and he looks at your, your deeds. Now, and and uh, the heart is mentioned because that is the home of ikhlas. That is the home of sincerity. It's what your heart intends when you do it that Allah will judge you by. You can look like you're praying salah, but if you're doing it because I want to make my parents happy because they're going to buy me this, uh, you know, this prize, this vehicle or, or, or this opportunity, then Allah's not going to reward you for praying salah. No, you're not going to be rewarded because Allah looks at the heart and why you did it. Right? In another narration, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ And some people translate it as actions are judged by intentions. And this is not a correct translation. Because if you look at the reality of the Arabic text, the Arabic text is actually saying that there's nothing about your actions except that Allah will judge your actions based on the intentions present when you did that act. Now, there's a difference between this translation and me just saying actions are judged by intentions, right? I mean, consider this for greater clarity. If I say Muhammad is standing, and then I say there's nothing about Muhammad except that he's standing, right? Now, you imagine Muhammad next to me, okay? Let's say Muhammad is next to me and he's wearing jeans and he's wearing a gray shirt and he has a watch, for example, okay? You just imagine him here um, in, in, in this manner. When I tell you that Muhammad is standing, you can say, okay, he's standing and he's, he has blue jeans, he has a gray shirt and he has a, a, a black watch. You can add to that, right? In terms of the meaning of the statement, or let's, let's rephrase it. We can say this is a statement that permits you to add, you know, uh, add meanings to it because it's an open-ended statement in terms of meaning. But if I tell you that there's nothing about Muhammad next to me except that he's standing. What happens? This, this gives you an acute focus, right? Upon the fact that he's standing. That it doesn't matter whether he's wearing jeans or a gray shirt or he has a black watch or whether he's next to uh, Sajid Umar. It doesn't matter. What matters is the fact that he's standing. And this is what the hadith is saying. That there's nothing about your actions except that they will be judged based on the intention. Everything else doesn't matter. It's all about the intention. Ponder over this point, my dearest brothers and sisters in Islam. We'll take a quick break and when we return, we will continue, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbi wa man wala. All praises belongs to Allah and peace and salutations be upon the final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Welcome back. Uh, everybody. So just before the break, um, we completed two etiquettes from the etiquettes of seeking knowledge. The first one was the importance of having a noble character. And the second one was uh, the importance of being sincere when you seek knowledge. This is an important and fundamental etiquette when seeking knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us a sincere people. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive the mistakes of our past and inspire our futures, inshallah. Ameen, ya rabbal alameen. The next etiquette, my, dear, my dearest brothers and sisters in Islam, when seeking knowledge is to adorn yourself with taqwa. To adorn yourself with, with taqwa. Because taqwa is the recipe to constant advancement as a student of knowledge. Yes, if you want to progress as a student of knowledge, you've got to be God conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the question is, what is taqwa? What is taqwa? Uh, some translations, they translate taqwa as the fear of Allah. Some translations translate taqwa as being uh, God conscious. Uh, perhaps God conscious um, is, is, a, is a better translation than, um, uh, than the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But um, in reality, uh, taqwa, even in the Arabic language, is a universal term in that when we want to explain it, we don't have a synonym for it, right? Uh, and not just because there's a rule in the Arabic language which states that there's no two true synonyms in the Arabic language. And that is a rule, by the way, because the Arabic language is so amazing that you will not find another word that carries uh, the same meaning as another word 
um, in the sense that you can say this is a true synonym of this particular word. It doesn't exist. That's how rich the Arabic language is, but that is a side point, right? Um, what I want you to understand is we're not saying that there's no other word in the Arabic language that matches taqwa because there's no two true, two, uh, true synonyms in the Arabic language. What we're saying is you cannot explain taqwa with just a word, even in Arabic. And when you look at the scholars' explanations of uh, a taqwa, you actually find that they explain taqwa with sentences. And yes, they have different uh, sentences, but when you look at the meanings of what they say, uh, they allude to uh, something similar. And that is the following, that taqwa is an taj'ala baynaka wa bayna adhab illahi wiqaya. Taqwa is about placing between yourself and uh, the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a barrier. Okay, a barrier. And um, what is this barrier? This barrier is a protector between you and the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, how do we erect this barrier? By living upon the do's and staying away from the don'ts. That is how we erect it. By being upon the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and staying away from the don'ts. So to progress as a student of knowledge, you must have taqwa. No doubt when you learn about good character and implement good character, this is from you erecting a wall erecting a wall which will inshallah protect you from the hellfire, from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, why do we need taqwa? Well, from this understanding, we understand why. No doubt, when you understand that this is my protector, everyone is desperate to save themselves from the hellfire. So you want to grab onto every tool that you can find to protect you. And taqwa, no doubt, is a tool because it's, a, it's going to be your wall. But even when we look in the Quran, we see subhanallah that this uh, concept of taqwa, and this advice towards a taqwa, right? Um, it was actually uh, advice that was given to those before us. And it is advice that has also been given to us. And it's also advice that has been given to those to come after us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ وَصَّيْنَا الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنِ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ That we have instructed those who are given the scripture before you and yourselves to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, this is a rough translation of the ayah, but the point is Allah is saying, we have instructed uh, the, uh, those that were given the scripture before you and yourselves to be God conscious of Allah, to erect this barrier between you and the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we look in the sunnah, we find a narration in another compilation of a, a book that gathers uh, the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this book is known as uh, At-Tirmidhi or Jami' At-Tirmidhi. In this particular uh, book, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said in a narration narrated by Abu Umamah radiallahu an, he says that he heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, fear your Lord and pray your five salah and fast your month of Ramadan and pay your zakah and obey those of Islamic authority over you and you will enter the paradise of your Lord. Meaning you will enter paradise if you do this. Now the point to mention here is fear or the point to zoom in into is the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, fear your Lord. Again, this is a rough translation. Uh, it's him saying Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, be conscious of your Lord. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, be conscious of your Lord and this will be a recipe for you to be protected from the hellfire and uh, gain, gain entry into paradise. Um, also, my dearest brothers and sisters, after taqwa, another etiquette from the etiquettes when seeking knowledge is to love Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and love His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? This is an etiquette from the etiquettes of seeking knowledge. You have to love Allah and you have to love His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And love, subhanallah, is such an important recipe. Such an important recipe, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ That those who believe, they love Allah more than anything else. If you really want to be amazing in seeking knowledge, and amazing in having sublime character, you have to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and love His Rasul. This is the recipe of you actually gaining quantum progress in your journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Quantum progress in the realm of success in your journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And think about it, my dearest brothers and sisters. You know, we do things that we love. And we do things for people that we love. And you know what? 
Nobody needs to convince us to do things for them. Nobody needs to motivate us to do things for them, right? And you know, when you, I know as a you know as a teacher that Subhanallah, you know, when Allah blesses me by placing love for my students in me, Wallahi, they become such amazing students, and the whole process becomes so amazing for me, the teacher, right? When I say place love for them in me, meaning as their teacher, right? I don't have to push them to study. And wallahi, I've, you know, I've experienced this. I can, I, I, and this poor slave of Allah, may Allah forgive me, but Allah has blessed me with this. In, and I recall the subhanAllah that once I taught a class of 11 to 12 year olds and they were having trouble with their previous teacher. Um, when I say trouble, I mean lack of motivation. A lot of the parents were saying that it's, it's a real struggle, you know. Uh, they experience great fatigue at home, pushing the child, pushing the child, pushing the child, and they feel like the child's not interested. And um, for some reason, the teacher had to go and um, I was asked to fill in for the teacher for the remainder of the semester. And what I did was just interact with the students. And uh, through that process, subhanAllah, Allah placed this love for them in me. And that's, that's what I put it down to because all of a sudden they started leaving their sports days at schools to come to the madrasa for the lessons. Pa you know, uh, parents were contacting me saying, what have you done to our children? What are you making them drink? And I said, Whoa, what do you mean by this? They say for the first time in six years or seven years, we've, we're going out on the weekend or we're going out for a, a weekend break. And our child says, no, I can't come. I need to stay at home. I have exams at the madrasa. And subhanAllah, I was taken aback and I pondered over this and I thought, you know what? It must be because we've reached that, you know, uh, uh, that arena and area whereby love exists between us. It's just a natural, it's human nature that you motivated when you love somebody, right? And if you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then no doubt you will do, you won't need to be motivated. And subhanAllah, you know, if you really want to, you know, uh, get, get put, you know, get pushed to come to shove, then it's all about love, right? It's all about love. Because if you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than anything else, then you will leave sin. It's a fact. If you're engaging in a sin, right? Um, then the question you've got to ask yourself is, how much do I love the sin and how much do I love Allah? Right? Obviously, when, if, if you're blessed with being conscious at that moment, yes, we're weak, there's some sins that overpower us. I don't want to sidetrack in the discussion, but I just want to qualify my statement that yes, there's some sins that overpower us and we regret and we really want to stop them and we're working on it um, and we really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more and that's why we feel the regret and this should be our yardstick, the issue of regret. And some people practice sins and they don't even regret. So the question to them is, do you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because if you love him and you know this angers him, why would you do it, right? Uh, but when people feel regret and people write to me and say, Shaykh, I feel so bad, this is what happened. I say, look, glad tidings to you. You writing in is a sign of Iman. You writing in is a sign that you love Allah, right? So keep seeking forgiveness from Allah and do whatever you can, do everything in your capacity to get yourself to a stage where you detach yourself from the sin, okay? Um, so this is just to qualify the discussion. It's not the focus of our discussion, just to qualify it. Never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. But the point is, my dearest brothers and sisters, right? Love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and love for His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is an important, important uh, etiquette that we need when we seek knowledge because this will drive us to put that knowledge into practice, right? And this will... Uh, drive us towards growing and developing our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger some more because the more you learn about someone naturally the more you love them it's human nature when two people get married right you know they say we before they get married uh, the boy will come and say you know Shaykh I, I love her I have to marry her and we say but brother how do you know you love her and you have to marry her I said you don't know that he goes I know that I said no maybe it's just infatuation it's, it's not possible that you can love someone you don't know Right? That's infatuation. Love comes the more you learn about them. It's like when you get married and you're sleeping at night and in the early hours of the morning you hear this movement and, and you, you open your tired eyes and, and you see your, your newlywed, your wife, worshipping Allah at Tahajjud time. And now you learn something that you didn't know. What happens to you when you learn that about her? Wow, you, you love her more. That is now love. Right? Or she goes to a gathering and someone tells her, you know, this particular masjid or this orphanage, it's sponsored by so-and-so. And she realized, but that so-and-so is my husband. I didn't know this about him. What, does, what happens? She learns something new which made her love him more. That is real love, right? So love is an important etiquette. 
when you want, uh, in terms of seeking knowledge, and the more knowledge you seek, it's going to make you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more. And when you love Allah more and you love His Rasul more, then you're going to adorn the knowledge that you have with action, with character, inshaAllah. My dearest brothers and sisters in Islam, Unfortunately, our time has come to an end. I love you all for the sake of Allah and I ask Allah to preserve us in his obedience. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.